guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Mobster Metropolis and it's by Stormarkton Productions. In the game Mobster Metropolis, the Carlito godfather of Metropolis has passed on and you are playing as a mobster crime syndicate. You're playing as one of the families, one of the main characters, which will hopefully become one of the godfathers of Metropolis. If you're smart, you're going to be placing down certain locations in the different blocks blocks of the area of the metropolis to try and gather currency. You'll be utilizing vehicles to make drive-bys so that you can go from one area to the next, utilizing cards in your hand, whether they be black market cards or gangster cards, to simply attack your opponents. If you have the most points, you're going to win in that specific fight, gathering reputation, because reputation is everything in this game, even more than money. At the end of five rounds, if you have the most reputation in the game, Mobster Metropolis, you're going to be the winner. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how to play, and then I'll give you my review of this crazy mobster game. So this is a mobster metropolis and everything included up to a four player game. This is set up for two players, however, but I'm going to show you all the components anyway. This is the rule book for the game, which has full illustrations of how the game and the turns work. It's fairly simplified. Game is fairly easy to understand, even though there's quite a few components in the game. Over here, we have the two players set up. This is the character that each player is going to be playing with, and they each have unique abilities based on their reputation meter up here, along with they're going to be getting cars in the game that they'll be using for drive-bys, and of course the character's name. You're going to have these boards here, which will indicate where in the areas on the board you're going to be going through for drive-bys. These are kind of like hidden boards that we will reveal at a certain point during the game, in which case you'll determine if you're the attacker or the defender for certain drive-bys. These are the character colored spaces or locations where you're going to be placing them down on the board. These will give you income, they'll let you drive by and attack them, and you'll be using them to defend your currency that you're going to hopefully be getting throughout the game. These are currency markers over here, which will indicate for each one you have on any of these locations, it'll give you a currency. And these are defense markers over here, indicating if they're on a location, they're going to give you plus one defense to that location, which will help you prevent other gangsters from driving by and collecting the loot that is on your territory. Each player is going to have a set of those along with these wonderful little guys here. These are your recruits. There's different types with different symbols. These will help back up your certain hideouts, whether they be a speakeasy or a brothel or a greenhouse or a warehouse. Everybody's going to start with one character, one board, all the components of their color and $12 along with these handy dandy little shields that will basically block people from seeing what you've got. You're going to be putting all your stuff behind there so nobody knows what you have. Uh, additionally, it's going to tell you the symbols in the game and how they work, the cards and how they function, and of course your hand limit. But because we're just going to show you a top-down version, we won't actually need to show you this. Just let you know that it is there and it exists. There's a black market deck and a mobster deck, and which you're going to be drawing and doing a certain draft in the game, which I'll explain in a second here, but you're going to need to go ahead and shuffle these up. There are also these additional spaces or tokens here, which you'll place on the board in the middle of each of the areas, depending on the number of players in the game, which will tell you what each location is. So for instance, we're playing with the dump, the prison, and the park in this two-player game. If you were playing with a three-player game, you would include this portion of the board, and if you're playing with a four-player, you would include the entire board area. Here are additional characters, which we don't need, but in general, when you first start out, you're going to take two, choose one, and discard the other, and that's the character you're playing with. These are additional boards for additional players. Then we also have the first player marker. This is just a symbol to indicate whether you're first or not and in what turn order things are going to happen in. Uh, and additionally, there are going to be these markers here, which you'll be placing down on the board and the respective areas. And how do you determine that? Well, the first card for the Metropolis news cards will tell you the setup of the game. This is Corello's way. I said Carlito in the intro, but it's Corello's legacy. And it tells you in a two player game where you're going to put the different tokens down on the board and in a three and a four player game. So that's fairly useful. You're going to shuffle these decks up separately in the pages because they have one through five, which is going to equate to the rounds one to five. And as you can see, we've got page one, two, three, four, and five, which are drawn randomly. Meaning that when you have each of these separate decks, you're going to draw randomly from the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours, and the fives, and then put them in order from one through five, specifically for each and every round of the game, which means the rest of this deck here is not needed. And you can simply go ahead and remove it after you get your, get your stack of five 
five news cards. You can go ahead and set this aside somewhere. It'll be used when the specific rounds tell you. The same follows with the police cards as well. These cards are specifically going to uh, hurt the player who has the highest reputation and uh, hurt the lower reputation players less, hopefully. But the game, of course, gets more transitional and everybody starts getting hurt as the game progresses. And the rest of these police cards are also not going to be needed, which just provides a lot of replayability. You additionally will have the yellow and the red players pieces for the game mode if you're playing with three or four players. But in this case, I'm just showing you a quick two player variant of how the rules function. So we're not going to use these or these as well. These are simply markers that are going to be placed here on the zero track of your reputation. Uh, so go ahead and remove those as well. We also won't need these pieces because we've already set up the rest of these, so we'll move these aside. It actually comes with an additional first player marker, but we won't need that either. The final pieces to the game are simply the board itself, the money, which everybody starts with 12 like I said previously, and then there's markers, one for the rounds and one for the phases of the game. This will indicate which phase the game is going through, and it'll go through this five times before the game ends. And that's pretty much the setup for the game. You can go ahead and move these characters off to the side somewhere. I'll simply place them over these pieces here just so you can see the game better. I'll move these down as well. Um, and so because we're not using this board, it's not going to matter so much since we're only going to be using these three sections of the game mode. And the first thing that's going to happen is the news phase. Only for the first round is going to basically give you the setup for the game. So we're going to reveal the setup, and then we're going to go ahead and discard this card. If it was any other round, like the second, third, fourth, or fifth, you'll reveal the corresponding news card, and there's going to be a bidding war in which you're going to be bidding money, secretly revealing money, and trying to basically win. The person who wins dumps their money. The losers are going to keep their money. And if there's a tie, you will keep bidding until there's a winner, up until the point where everyone simply ties and no one wants to bid anymore. And that will actually end in nobody getting the reward that they probably want. The next phase is the draft phase. And in a two player game, the way a draft works is each player is going to get three mobster cards and three black market cards. They'll choose one of these cards and discard another and then pass their hand to the player across from them up until the point where everybody has three cards because you'll be discarding one and drawing one and you'll be passing the hands back and forth just like a normal draft. So I'll go ahead and show you how it kind of works really quick here because why not? So this player's got his three black Black Market and three Mobster, and so does this player over here. So he would select one, he would discard one, uh, uh, he would select one, and he would discard one. They would then change hands, he would select one, he would select one, they would both discard one, they would exchange hands, and a you get it, which will then end up with each player having three cards in their hand, along with a card that basically is going to let you bluff. There's a card that you can never lose in the game, and that card is going to basically simulate that you playing nothing, which I'll explain a little bit later here. After the draft has been completed, we're going to go on to the investment phase. And in the investment phase, you're going to be able to spend your money, your $12 you start with, and in every subsequent round, the money that you have earned via investing in turfs. And you're going to be spending money on buying cards, cars, which are these guys here. When you buy them, you're simply going to pay the price here and place one down. Every time you buy a car, you'll gain a reputation, just like that. And you're also going to be utilizing these in drive-bys. For each car you have, you're going to get one of these areas here, which you can go ahead and determine where you want to send your cars to, whether it be A9 or whether it be something like I8. And uh, every round is going to be different as far as that goes, but you'll be basically using each of the cards as much as you possibly can. Another thing you can do is you can buy turfs. And turfs are these guys here. There is a cost on the turf, which will tell you right up here, $5. The initial amount of reputation you gain when you purchase one. So if I got one, I can then go ahead and place it anywhere on these three boards here. And when I place turf down, if I place them on an area like this, I'll gain whatever benefit that these provide. Otherwise, you're simply going to place it in an empty blank area that is adjacent to one of these three areas. So you're never going to be placing them down here or here in a, in a two-player game. This is going to give you one of these tokens on the turf. This is going to give you one of these tokens on the turf. Uh, and this will give you a white card, which is going to be the mobsters. And this will give you a black, which is a black market. When these are removed, they are gone forever. So remember that. Additionally, with these, when you play them down, at the uh, during every round, you're going to get a basic in income. As well as for each green token you have on here, you'll get an additional income of five, three, or uh, two, whatever it says on the cards here. This one specifically says five, though. 
So that is another option you can do. Another one is you can go ahead and buy recruits. Recruits also have a cost to them. It tells you the top, usually it's either two or three. And that tells you what token you're gonna be placing down on each of the different areas. So for instance, if I had a greenhouse and I was white here, I could place one of these guys down for two currency. And then during a certain phase in the game, I will be able to take the uh, symbol that relates to this guy and base it on a symbol that relates that is the same as him matching, as long as it corresponds to the area that he's adjacent to. So in this case, he can go either here or here, and here he can go either here or here. And that's gonna potentially give me more money or defense depending on which of the different recruits I purchase. The last thing you can do is buy action cards and action cards are gonna cost three and you can buy them over here for three currency. You can get another card, which will help you uh, in the attack phase. If you don't want to do any of that or you can't because you have no more money, you can simply choose to pass. But that could mean that the other player can simply take as many turns as he or she may want to up until the point where they will also then choose to pass. The next phase is going to be the delegate phase, uh, where we, you know, basically you're going to uh, give for each of the little spaces you have on the board, you're going to get to place tokens down on these areas here. So for instance, if I have these two spaces here, I could choose to either place one defense on the, the, this area here, or I can place a money on here. But when you place them for this specific phase, the delegate phase, you're going to place them face down and you'll reveal them in a later step. So this is basically going to determine whether you want to get paid more or whether you want to defend an area more. And that might determine on the niceness of the area or whether or not you think an opponent is going to try and take you down in that area. There are additional cards and other things that can facilitate you getting tokens on these, such as uh, the specifically these little guys here, your recruits. At, based on each square too. So in this case, if I had one of these guys on a space like this, I would get to place two tokens face down on this. Uh, additionally, after this phase is over, everybody's placed all that down, uh, you can only put two tokens uh, on a space based on the recruits. So if you had four recruits here, they were all this guy, you can only put two on this specific area over here. So if they're four of the same, which is this guy here, you could put two on this, and then you could put two on this or one and one on each of these. That would be how it functions. Uh, after everybody's placed all of those face down tokens, you're going to move on to the next phase, which is, and you can actually show it down here, which is going to be the scheme phase, in which each player is going to take their plaques and they're going to delegate for each of the cars that they have where they want to move for a drive by. So if my opponent wanted, he can go, okay, I'm going to go to B7. So I'll go ahead and put B and I'll go ahead and put seven. That's where my first car is going to go, which is basically going to be worth one attack. So you would actually place this hit, you would wait to place this. Uh, after all of you have chosen to delegate where each of your cars go. Some people may have more cars than other people. After everybody's done their scheme, you're then going to go ahead and reveal, which is going to show all the tokens that were face down on your spaces. So for instance, if I had these guys like this, I would reveal these to indicate where each of these guys have been placed. After that happens, the police card is going to get drawn. So the one to five police card, you're going to draw one of these guys. And then based on reputation, we'll determine what happens. The person with the highest is going to suffer a penalty. Person with the lowest will have to usually suffer nothing or a lower penalty. And anybody in the middle will suffer the middle penalty. If everybody is tied, then nothing will happen. This will go on for all five of the rounds. Then after that is done, you're going to move on to the drive-by phase in which you're going to go ahead and take all the cars and place them based on your your chosen spaces per car, one, two, three, four, and five. You can either choose to place them on a space to attack or multiple cars in the same place to attack, or you can choose to place them on your own locations to defend because cars are worth one attack value and one and one will cancel out and defenders always win on a tie. It's a very simple idea of a game of war, for instance. After everybody has basically revealed and, uh, done, and placed all their cars down, the first player is going to start by going around to each of the areas that they're choosing to attack and play a game of war, which is basically going to allow you to place certain cards face down. So I'll play a card face down. My opponent will then have the opportunity to play a card face down. You will reveal, and then whoever has the most is going to win. But don't forget, there's also some combat tricks like plus one defense after cards have been revealed. It plays similar to a game called Cosmic Encounter as well. But the idea is pretty simple. If you're defending with a four and I am attacking with a three, you will win. If it's vice versa, I, uh, the person who's attacking will win. And not only that, but depending on how much you're attacking with. So for instance, if blue's attacking white here, white has a defense of two, but blue played a card worth three. That would be four. And uh, let's go ahead and say that this character here had three monies on it. 
based on winning, how much your attack difference is, you're going to take that many tokens and then you're going to gain the value of that location based on the tokens you took. So in this case, if he, Blue attacked and he got plus two against the defense, he would get $10. And that is how attacking the location works. You would do that for the first player, then you go to the second player, third, until there's no more attacks left. And remember, even if you chose, uh, or you didn't have a card, uh, a, a card to play down, you could also choose to play drive-by cards, which will function the same way, or you could choose to pass. But passing still means you can defend, it just means that your attacking is over. And then after that, you have the last phase of the game, which is the collect phase. You're going to collect money based on your locations, uh, based on their main amount of profit, which is going to be one, or it could be two, or even three, or even more. And then you're going to collect money based on the tokens you have present on your uh, specific turf areas, which can give you up to five currency, which is pretty dang good. After you've collected all of your currency, this token here is going to move, move to the next player, and the game is basically going to start over for the next phase, which is the news phase. The round will go down, and you will continue playing the game until you're playing the short game, which is just three rounds, or you're playing the long game, which is all five. At that point, whoever has the most reputation is going to be the winner, and there is a bunch of tiebreakers as well. And that's the basic idea for Mobster Metropolis, give you a full rundown of how the game pretty much functions, at least an entire round of it. Uh, let's go ahead and come up. I'll discuss a couple other things, along with some interesting things like these prison parks and the dump area, and what they're going to do and how they're going to affect your turfs. So let's go ahead and talk about Mobster Metropolis and what I think of this game. And the first thing I wanna talk about is of course the turf location tokens or tiles here. District tiles is what they're called. Whether it be a park, a prison, a dump, or any of the many other ones, it could be a train station or uptown. These will provide benefits and negatives for each of the turfs in that specific area. And in the rule book here, it's listed as to how they all function. But the idea is pretty simple. Certain areas are going to cost you more to place turf cards down while other areas are going to cost you less but maybe one will give you a higher investment maybe one is not going to allow you to affect uh, certain characters or investors or whatever to place on those specific areas and some of them also might give you a certain defense boost or others might not let you play cards on them so they all have a different way of functioning and they change based on how the game is played you're going to go ahead and draw them at random and place them down on the board additionally cards like the police card and the news card are cards that are going to get drastically more challenging as they continue through the game. One of them is going to be a bidding card that of course escalates in value when you're bidding and it's likely going to cost you more because the value of the effect is going to be higher. And then you have the other one which is the police card. Players with a higher reputation are going to suffer some type of penalty. It's what I like to call, uh, what's the word, where you're doing so well so it kind of bumps the top player down and boosts the top player. It's a catch-up mechanic basically. And it functions very well for what it's supposed to be doing. It can actually cost you reputation and in some cases in this game you might not want to start off with a high reputation but you might want to start off with a lot of money and invest in reputation as you continue to play the game because with more money comes more turf more turf comes more cars for drive-bys and all of that is going to give you reputation the game board is excellent the artwork is wonderful as well the theme comes across very well indeed in fact you're playing as a mobster trying to build your family up because uh, Carlotta, the, the, the last mobster from Metropolis has, you know, passed on. And so you're trying to basically show that you are, you've got the cojones to take on the rest of the challengers. What's also interesting about this game too, is the board itself is set into three separate sections for a two, three, or a four player game. So with a four player game comes a larger space for playing down your turfs. And there's also more cities and whatnot, which of course gets more strategic as to where you want to play certain things, whether you want to be defensive or aggressive during your attack. Attack. There's the draft of the game, which is cool as well. If you like drafting, it functions well. In a three and a four player game, it's a simple basic draft in which you're just picking one, passing, picking one, and passing up until the point where you have all of your cards. That's fun as well. And each of the different mobsters have different abilities. So if I actually take a look at just this guy here, this is Corello's Bastard. This one has at zero reputation. You can place one extra defense face up on the, in, during the delegate phase, which you're placing those tokens down. You get a free defense, which is good. Uh, at six reputation, you gain one additional rep after each successful drive-by, wow. And then at 14, you collect a dollar for each person uh, that you have during the collection phase, all your little recruits that you have on the board. And there's ways that 
recruits can pass on as well. You've also got mobster cards and you've got black market cards. And I'll go ahead and just take a look at some of these here. Uh, first of all, I want to show you one, which is the unarmed card. Everyone gets one of these and you're always going to be keeping them throughout the rounds. In general, throughout rounds, at the end of the game, you're, at the end of each round, you're only going to get to keep two cards and this is always one you have to keep. So the other one is kind of your choice. The rest will get discarded and you'll get currency for them. But as far as other cards go in this specific deck, you have backup, which will give you one defense after your attack cards have been placed face down. Mundry laundering, letting you draw two mobster cards, or two defense for bodyguards, and of course a Molotov cocktail for three damage. So these are all cards similar to Cosmic Encounter, which you're placing face down, revealing and doing damage, hoping your damage or attack is higher than your opponent's defense so you can take their money and gain influence when you win. Then they've got the mobster cards here, which there's stuff like greedy. Switch which one of your uh, defense to money, which is a good thing to do, especially when players you think might not go to certain areas. Or take one mobster at random from a player of your choice. That's pretty good as well. C uh, Cuban cigars, you and another player each get three bucks. And in a three or four player game, that works pretty well. And there's a lot of cards in the game. There's a lot of police cards in the game and news cards that will change the game and how it is played as well as, of course, the tiles, these little district tiles here, which will change the game as well. The game Mobster Metropolis is basically a aggressive tile placement game with a draft and a couple other mechanics like war that are kind of mixed into it. You're trying to grow, but you want to make sure you grow at your pace to get the influence you want when you want it. There's certain times where you're not going to want influence as much until you want to kind of just cram them all down, or other players, based on their abilities, might really want to get influence as fast as they possibly can because that is going to give them stronger abilities. Another thing with this game, too, are these little boards here that you put together, the district and blocks where you're going to be moving them around and basically hiding them face down and revealing them. Oh, all of my cards are going to these areas here, and you didn't think I was going to go there. There's some unique mechanics as well to the game, which is interesting. The face down tokens, whether they be money or defense, having to decide this location only has one one token on it and there may or may not be any cars going to it so it's likely they're going to at least put money down because if they don't they're not going to get any income other than just that measly one or two so that's likely going to be money i'm going to go there oh no they played a defense there why did they do that well it's because now i've lost one of my cars and my attack is completely useless because i get no money for it sure i get rep but sometimes i don't want rep so there's a lot of little choices in the game that really make a difference when you're playing this game it's a longer game and there is a bit of setup in the game as well you're going especially with a larger player game is going to be more board space and in the two player game is only those three little areas so if you're one of those picky people who are like I want to play with the entire board and I want to play a two player game this might be like not something you're going to really enjoy the aspect of because of the fact that you're just playing with basically a third of the board because basically as the board gets bigger there's a lot more space and it kind of reduces conflict and the game is all about conflict it's all about being aggressive and so it tries to shorten the space up or tighten the space up between players to force them to kind of have to deal with each other to get as much money in rep as possible all the tokens are high quality and there is a ton of gameplay in this game. If you like a combative game that has a bit of a twist to it as far as the different mechanics go, you're going to dig Mobster Metropolis. It's not a game I've played, I can't think of a lot of games that I've played similar to it, but there's a lot of mechanics in here that share similarities, uh, such as certain tile placement games, of course the cosmic counter style fighting, and then the hidden board aspect where you flip them up. But all of these mechanics put into one works really well, and once you understand the game, it flows pretty quickly. Your first game is probably going to take about two hours, maybe a little longer if you're playing with three and four players but if you have a player who's played at least once it's gonna be really easy to understand and hopefully with this video it gave you enough to understand how to play this game people who don't like a competitive aggressive game are probably gonna want to stay away from this game or people who don't like the mobster theme because it does shine through in this will not like this game as well but if you've heard enough and you think this is a game that you'd be interested in taking a look at I would definitely suggest you take a look down below at our mobster metropolis I think they're at Essen right now showing off their game might be something you want to pick up go ahead and take a look thanks for watching and as always i look forward to destroying or defeating the dawn and the rest of you guys next time you got that in it right